Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the House of European Football here in Lyon in a packed auditorium. I really like that for the European qualifiers draw. Today, we mark the start of our second phase on our journey towards the UEFA Women's Euro 2025. And if the European qualifiers are anything like what we witnessed over the past five months in the Nations League, then we are in for a real treat. The UEFA Women's Nations League marked the beginning of a new era for women's national team football. An era that has delivered more fans in stadiums, more people watching on TV, but for sure more competitive football on the field of play. An era that has truly elevated the national team game across the continent and which culminated in a brilliant final four, which saw world champion Spain add the first ever Nations League title to their trophy cabinet after beating France in a hard fought final in Seville. Meanwhile, in the third place match in Herrenveen, the Germans beat the Dutch to claim the final spot for next summer's Olympic Games in Paris. And whilst I can try to describe how good it was, pictures still say much, much more. So let's take a look at some actions from the Nations League. What a delight this competition has been. And of course, we wish the three European teams the very best for the Olympic tournament. And of course, we hope that one of you brings home the gold this summer. So no pressure at all from our side, but that would be a nice thing. While Spain, France and Germany have indeed the Olympics to look forward to, we are here for the European qualifiers draw the next step on our road to the UEFA Women's Euro 2025. No doubt the expectations are huge. And we will again do our utmost to deliver the most attended, most watched and most competitive Euro ever. A Euro that puts players and teams at the heart of our action and a Euro that ensures once more that women and girls in Switzerland, in Europe and across the world can walk away feeling that they can dream big and that they can achieve extraordinary things. With your help, with the help of the Swiss Football Federation and the entire continent, this is possible. It must be possible. So let's see who will make it in the end, who will move mountains in the qualifiers and who will ultimately compete at the summit of emotions here in Switzerland for the Women's Euro 2025. And on this note, ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to turn our attention to the draw and with this to our special guest. Luckily for me, and I guess also for you, the audience, I will be sharing the 51 balls today on stage and with that also a little bit the responsibility. My guest is a Swiss football icon <laughs> whose talent between the post saw her play across the continent and she's been a star in the Nati for over 15 years, helped to help her country qualify for the first international major tournaments, the Women's World Cup and the Women's Euro. She just finished her career at the last Women's World Cup and she now swapped her boots and gloves with a clipboard and a microphone serving as a 
TV expert for Swiss TV, as the head of women's football at FC Lugano, and as well as a goalkeeper coach for the team Ticino Boys under 17 side. So let's take a look at who she is. Ladies and gentlemen, please give a warm applause to Gael Talman. Thank you so much for coming, Gael. I can't believe it. Hundred what? Hundred nine caps for Switzerland? Yeah. Wow! I mean, I would have needed to play many, many years to achieve that. Gael, I said in my introduction, you. I mean, you're multitasking: football administration here, coaching there, TV there. How's retirement going? But most importantly, do you still have a little bit of time <laughs> for pleasure in life? Yes, indeed, uh, a busy life uh, I have. Um, and I have no time to wonder whether I miss playing or not. <laughs> <laughs> but more seriously, um, I have a privilege to work in football, um, to have many tasks and to find out what I will do, uh, what I would like to do in the future. And um, it's also an opportunity to see more sites, more stuff and um, to, to make experience and to, to grow every day. Uh, within football, which is my passion. Not an easy decision to make, so take your time. You have all the options in the world. Gael, I said you played across the continent, you had a 20-year professional career, you helped your country to qualify for its major first international tournaments, which was the World Cup in 2015 and the Euro in 2017. Take us back. How important is that first qualification for a country and what did it mean to you and your teammates? Well, it was uh, for us, it was uh, something amazing um, to qualify for both tournaments. Uh, it was something historical um, and to confirm the, the first qualification to the World Cup with uh, the qualification to the Euro was uh, surely uh, an amazing thing. Um, we were happy for ourselves as, as uh, athletes, of course, but also for all the girls in, uh, and young players in Switzerland uh, that would have come after to, to show that uh, women's football too has uh, its place among the best in Europe and uh, it's all it meant to us. I think that's a very nice message for those that come and are still coming after you. And now the tournament is here. You are next in line. Switzerland is the host. How was it when the news broke? I think it was last April. And what can the world expect of this beautiful country? What can the fans expect? Well, last April, uh, I did have some mixed feelings because I already knew I, I would have retired from uh, active football, from playing football after the World Cup. So I knew I wouldn't be able to play the Euro at home. Uh, but on the other side, uh, of course, I was happy for, for our country, for um, my teammates that would have uh, had the opportunity to play a tournament at home, uh, for Switzerland to host the tournament, and uh, of course also for the two women at the FA that uh, handled the bid. The bid. Um, and as a, as a host, I think Switzerland is a well-organized country, and I hope people will see that uh, next summer. I hope too um, that, we'll, that they will find uh, an amazing atmosphere in the stadia, uh, short distances between the stadia, uh, amazing landscapes and uh, um, hopefully friendly people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure the Swiss are friendly, they are. And uh, yeah, a lot to look forward to. Thank you very much, Gail. We will chat along the draw, but you see 51 balls awaiting us. So we also have a job to do. But before we take it away, let's take a quick look at the technical procedure.
51 teams will participate in the Women's European Qualifiers League stage and they have been divided into the three leagues on the basis of their positions in the overall UEFA Women's Nations League phase rankings. League A will have four pots with four teams each. League B will also have four pots with four teams. League C will have three pots with five teams and one pot with four teams. The draw is done league by league, starting with League C, then League B and finally League A. Within each league, the draw will start with the highest pot and finish with the lowest pot. Drawn teams are always allocated to the groups in ascending order from groups 1 to 4 or 1 to 5 in the case of League C. A number of draw conditions apply. Based on decisions taken by the UEFA Executive Committee, certain teams may not be drawn in the same group. Teams that played in three-team groups in the UEFA Women's Nations League must be drawn into four-team groups in the Women's European Qualifiers. As a rule, teams are allocated to the groups in ascending order. When draw conditions apply, the computer used to assist with the draw will indicate the next available group. The computer calculations will anticipate all possible scenarios in order to prevent any deadlock situation. Every pot will be emptied before proceeding to the next pot and every group will be composed of one team from each pot, with the exception of Group C5 in League C, which has three teams. The draw starts with League C and Pot 1, containing five teams. The first team is drawn and then assigned to Group C1, the second to C2, the third to C3, the fourth to C4, and then the fifth to C5. The draw continues with pot two, pot three, and pot four, where teams will be drawn and assigned to groups in order from C1 to C5. The draw for League B and League A will be conducted in a similar manner, always starting with pot one and always drawing teams and assigning them to groups in ascending order. The league stage will be played over six match days from April to July 2024. At the end of the league stage, group standings and overall league rankings will determine direct qualification for the UEFA Women's Euro 2025, which will take place from the 2nd to the 27th of July 2025, and seeding for the Women's Euro final draw. Group standings and overall league rankings will also determine qualification and seeding for the UEFA Women's Euro playoff matches and automatic promotions and relegations to establish teams' starting league positions in the UEFA Women's Nations League of the next competition cycle. I hope that was clear for everyone. I don't see any questions anymore in too many faces, so I think it's time to go ahead. It was not really a quick draw procedure, though, but what can we do? A draw procedure is what it is, and it's time now, Gael, for us to kick off the draw officially. League C, pot one, and you go, of course, Let's get first. it started. Yes, get it started. Open our nice new balls. Pot one, Belarus. Belarus will go into C1. And now it's my turn indeed. In pot one again, we have Slovenia, Greece, Romania, and Albania. So let's see. Slovenia. Wonderful. Please tell us the next team. Slovenia won six out of their last ten qualifiers matches. Greece. And Greece will join C3.
two more teams to go. The next one in line is Romania to head C4. Wonderful. And one more ball to go before we move on to pot two. Albania. Indeed, Albania in C5. Good start. First pot done. And you go again first. Tell us the first team out of pot two. Latvia, Montenegro, Bulgaria, Estonia and Lithuania in there. Lithuania. And Lithuania can go to group C. No problem. I hear the talks are already starting here slowly in the <laughs> audience. Latvia is next in line and will indeed join C2. Montenegro. Even some <laughs> laughter is already. <laughs> the atmosphere is heating up. We like that on stage. Now two more balls to go. However, we know one thing, and that is, yes, that Estonia cannot go into group C4, has to go into group C5. So Bulgaria will be not allocated again to a three-team mini tournament. Uh, yeah, three-team uh, uh, group in general, not mini tournament. Please confirm that this is Bulgaria to fill the spot in C4, and it is Bulgaria. It is indeed Bulgaria. Wonderful. All right, halfway through. And you kick us off again. Pot C, pot three with Luxembourg, Kazakhstan, North Macedonia, Cyprus and Andorra. Cyprus. Cyprus has no problem and can go into C1, joining Belarus and Lithuania. in that second qualifying campaign, Cyprus. And the next team drawn is North Macedonia and they can indeed go to C2 and join Slovenia and Latvia. Andorra. Wonderful. Andorra will be part of Group C3. And together with Romania, Bulgaria will be Kazakhstan. All right. Gail, please tell us the last team before we move already to our final pot. And it's Luxembourg. It is Luxembourg. Wonderful. All right. Pot four ahead. Almost one third through the draw. Please tell us the first team. Georgia, Moldova, Faroe Islands and Armenia. And it is Georgia. Okay. Georgia completes the group with Belarus, Lithuania and Cyprus. Et voilà. Moldova will join C2. Faroe Islands. 
All right. Also, this group is complete, C3, with Faroe Islands. And the last team in this league, C draw, we all know it, but let's confirm it, is Armenia. Wonderful. One, not half of the job done yet, but we are, we are getting there. And let's take a quick look at the results. So C1 will be consisting of Belarus, Lithuania, Cyprus and Georgia. Group C2 will see Slovenia, Latvia, North Macedonia and Moldova compete. C3 will be joined by Greece, Montenegro, Andorra and the Faroe Islands. C4, Romania, Bulgaria, Kazakhstan and Armenia. And finally, C5, Albania, Estonia and Luxembourg. All right, we are ready, ready for the league B draw, which we start in a second. And we start also here again with pot one. In this league, we have a couple clashes to look out for. So don't be surprised if we slow a bit down on stage. We do everything very calmly. First team <laughs> for the league B draw. Switzerland. <laughs> That's why there's a lot of laughter now. Gail, your home country, the first team you draw and goes into B1. Wonderful. Heading B2 will be Scotland. Portugal. Portugal heads B3, qualified for the last two women's Euros, Portugal, and the last women's World Cup. And our last team in pot one will be Wales to be assigned to group B4. All right. Oh, we have new balls, they're very big and they don't fit into the bin. So, <laughs> that's the true story. Please, tell us the first team. Out of pot two, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Serbia, Croatia. Hungary. Hungary, indeed. Hungary can be assigned to B1, will join Switzerland. The next one is Serbia. Regular laughter about Serbia here from the Serbian delegation. <laughs> Group B2, Scotland and Serbia. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Exactly, can join B3 together with Portugal. And the last team out of pot two, together with Wales, will be Croatia. Now it's really half time. And we move on straight away, pot three with Slovakia, Northern Ireland, Ukraine and Turkey. Turkey. Turkey can indeed join Group B1 together with Switzerland and Hungary. Turkey won all their last six Nations League matches without conceding a goal. Impressive streak. And now, who will be part of the group of Scotland and Serbia? It is Slovakia. Can indeed join that group. <laughs> Slovakia. 
Northern Ireland and Ukraine still possible contenders from this group, from this pot. Northern Ireland. It is Northern uh, Northern uh, Northern Ireland last woman zero debutants. And our last team out of pot three is Ukraine and will join group B4. All right, now the final pot of League B, the one where we indeed have to, let's see if you manage <laughs> without any problems. There's also no pressure on you at all, but it would be great. I'm used to. Good, I can see you can handle a lot, so. Let us see now. Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan. And they can still go into group B1 and complete it. But now we need to indeed slow a little bit down. And now all of a sudden the pressure is on me to avoid the clash. And indeed I've managed to not achieve the job. Uh, so Kosovo <laughs> cannot be in the group together with Serbia, neither with Bosnia-Herzegovina, will therefore be assigned directly to group B4. And Gael, you therefore draw now the next team, which will join B2. Kosovo won their group in the Nations League without losing a match. So some... Israel. Israel. All right. Israel will join B2 and complete group B2. And together with Portugal, Bosnia-Herzegovina and Northern Ireland, there will be Malta. And once again, a quick recap for everyone. Let's take a look at the groups. B1, Switzerland versus Hungary, Turkey and Azerbaijan. Group B2 is Scotland, Serbia, Slovakia and Israel. Group B3 will see Portugal, Bosnia-Herzegovina, Northern Ireland and Malta compete against each other. And Group B4 will be consisting of Wales, Croatia, Ukraine and Kosovo. So, really now up to the final spur, to the last league, League A, and almost, almost, but not quite, at the end of this European qualifiers draw. But, let us see what groups we have next in the store. League. The Netherlands. The Netherlands will head Group A1. Nations League finalists, uh, final, uh, finalists, Netherlands. And um, pot one has also Spain, France and Germany in there. That's actually the whole Nations League finals line up there, of course. And the next one is the actual winner of the final. It is Spain, who will go into A2. Our world champions as well. France. France will head group A3. Wonderful. And it shall be your home country. Now I get to draw my home country too, that's true. It is Germany who will head group A4. And as I said earlier, who managed in a dramatic third place playoff to qualify with the Olympics against the Netherlands. Pot two, England, Denmark, Italy, and Austria are in there. Italy. Italy. 
twice Euro runners up. Italy will join the Netherlands. And Denmark will join Spain in Group A2. Women's Euro runners up in 2017. Denmark. The European champion, England. The European champion, England, will join France in Group A3. And together with Germany will be Germany's neighbors, Austria. Also semi-finalists at the last Women's Euro, Austria quarter-finalists at the, sorry, at the 217 Euro, but in the quarter-finals in England. Pot three comprises of Iceland, Belgium, Sweden and Norway. Norway. And Norway will join the Netherlands and Italy, world champion, Olympic champion, Euro winner. There is nothing that Norway hasn't won. And together with Spain and Denmark will be Belgium. Reached the Euro quarterfinals in England. Who will join France and England? Sweden. Sweden. Wow, that is Tough. a group. Euro champions in 85, in 84, sorry, Sweden. And our last team out of pot three is Iceland and will join Germany and Austria. So the last four balls ahead of us until we're already reaching the end and deserved our lunch. I can see you could do that for hours. For me, I'm getting a bit weaker on my legs. You do it more often. Yeah, should train more. Finland. F Finland, indeed, will be completing Group A1. Regular participant in Women's Euro final tournaments, Finland. And together with Spain, Denmark and Belgium will be Czechia. Came very close to making their debut for the Women's Euro 2022. So let's see this time. They lost against Switzerland, I think. <laughs> Who's predicting I'm sorry. results here? <laughs> <laughs> Republic of Ireland. <laughs> Republic of Ireland <laughs> to in Group A3 together with France, England and Sweden. And the last ball, I have the honor of showing the last team in this draw, which is Poland, which, wo which will complete Group A4. All right, Gail, already, already done. Let's again do a quick recap and then I want to hear what do you think about these groups? A1, Netherlands, Italy, Norway and Finland. A2, Spain, Denmark, Belgium, Czechia. A3, France, England, Sweden, Republic of Ireland. And A4, Germany, Austria, Iceland and Poland. What do you, what do you think? <laughs> Tough groups, uh, especially A3, I, I guess, um, with big clash ahead and uh, yeah. We are facing really challenging games and uh, it's nice for women's football. That's what we want, right? 
um, absolutely thrilling matches ahead. And yeah, I can only say thank you very much. I, it's very nice to be in the reliable hands of a goalkeeper. Thank you very much for being such a fantastic audience. I like the atmosphere in the room and we wish you all good luck for the matches, which will take place at the beginning of April. And the final match days will be concluded already uh, in July. So we don't have to wait very long for the matches to come. In July, we then will know the eight teams that will qualify directly to the Euro and the other seven teams have still to contest via the playoffs in October and November. So thank you again very much. Um, I also think we should give everyone already a sneak preview of, of Switzerland. Normally say, I say goodbye from us here at UEFA, but maybe we'll do all the Swiss language, uh, languages. What do you think? I think it's okay. Thank you for inviting me. Um, goodbye. Auf Wiederluege. Au revoir, arrivederci. And you have to learn all these languages, otherwise you can't <laughs> enter the country. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>